Well, in our previous lecture, we talked about interval scales and uh, how interval scales have description, order, and distance. And uh, if they're ratio scales, they can also have uh, origin, which is the presence of a true zero. We're going to talk about some interval scales that are commonly used in marketing research. And the first that I want to show you is what's called a Likert scale. Now, the term Likert scale is actually kind of used very generally, um, but Likert actually is the name of the researcher that developed the scale originally. And um, a Likert scale, actually, we treat it as an interval scale. It's actually an ordinal scale, strictly speaking. But um, remember, an, an interval scale has actual discrete equidistant points from one another, whereas an ordinal scale just has the presence of order and direction. Um, so this, this question here is asking you, indicate to what level you agree or disagree with the following statements. I enjoy taking Marketing 377. I strongly agree. I somewhat agree. I'm neutral. That's my midpoint. I somewhat disagree or I strongly disagree. So first of all, we call this a balanced scale because we have two points that are positive. We have a neutral midpoint. We have two points that are negative, so it's balanced. Um, this scale is, is worded in such a way that um, you know, it, it's intended to measure agreement with different statements. Um, and what we generally would do analytically is we would look at the percentage of people that mark so strongly agree or somewhat agree and compare them to the people that say that they disagree. And we might look at the neutrals as well if we're interested, or we might just treat neutral as kind of you know, data that we don't really care about because when people sit on the fence, it's generally not that interesting to us as researchers. Um, but as you can see, the way that this question is worded, the respondent can rate several different um, uh, attitudes that they might have towards our class by indicating their agreement, and they have the ability to say they agree or they disagree. Not all scales have, uh, not all scales let you tell both. Some only let you tell one. So another type of scale that we might use is called a staple scale, and a staple scale is as an actual interval scale, um, and what it generally uses is a um, a um, series of numbers that range from the negative version of the number to zero to the positive form of that number. So in this case, this is a five-point scale, so it goes from negative two to zero to two, positive two. Um, and in this case, it's asking to what level you agree or disagree with the following phrases describing Marketing 377. And then it gives some adjectives, challenging, lots of busy work, tough assignments, enjoyable. And it's up to the respondent to interpret what those scale points mean. So they're probably going to interpret that a zero means neutral. They're probably going to interpret that a plus two means uh, strongly agree, and that a negative two means that they strongly disagree. But it's up to them to interpret that. So even though we're probably going to analyze it in a very similar way to how we dealt with the Likert scale, we're going to look at the people that are in the positive range versus the people that are in the negative range and compare their relative proportions. Um, the assignment of what these values mean is really up more to the individual respondent than it is to the researcher. Now, this is a good thing and a bad thing depending on what you're asking them to rate. And um, I personally don't use staple scales very often. I, I, I find them kind of confusing for, for people. Um, but uh, there are applications where they're preferable because uh, having those numbers there and letting the respondent interpret things can help to eliminate some forms of bias, especially in questions that might seem a little loaded otherwise. This is a five-point non-symmetric agreement intensity scale, okay? And uh, I just usually call these agreement intensity scales or agreement scales because um, I actually use these quite commonly. I, I think that they're, they're pretty easy for people to understand and um, they're, they're pretty easy to analyze too. Indicate to what level you agree with the following statements. Okay, so there's a bunch of statements, and then um, it's on a scale of 1 to 5. A 1 means this does not describe me at all, and a 5 means this describes me very well. So the respondent is being asked to read a statement and say, does this describe me? Um, you know, if I'm in the middle, I can say a 3. If I kind of think it describes me, but I'm not 100% sure, I can say a 4. And if I really, really like what it has to say, I can say a 5. If I'm a little iffy, I can give it a 2 or a 1. Um, so... The statement here would be, I enjoy taking Marketing 377, and I, I know right away you're all going to give it a 5. Um, I enjoy our in-class lectures. I, hopefully you're going to give that a 5 as well. I enjoy our team project. Uh, you might give that a 4 or a 3. Yeah, I, can't, I can't be accountable for your teammates. I really enjoy our case study assignments. I'm sure a lot of you guys would give this a 6 if that were on the scale. But anyway, the idea here is that 
um, there are statements that respondents can agree or disagree with. And I could word those statements really negatively. I could say, I don't like the instructor very much. And I would hope you would all give it a one uh, and not a five. But I could do that maybe to make sure that the pattern of responses that you're answering um, doesn't, doesn't violate um, you know, the, uh, the, the it, it, spirit of the question, you know, that you're not doing what's called straight lining or yay saying, where you're just picking all the fives just to make me look good and that you're not really reading the questions. We can also have a five-point non-symmetric satisfaction scale. So um, I use these as well. On a scale of one to five, how would you rate your satisfaction with the following? And then we can have some attributes like homework and case studies and team project and lectures. A one means not satisfied. It doesn't mean dissatisfied. It just means not satisfied. And a five means highly satisfied. So again, we're leaving some interpretation up to the respondent, but we're not going into the negative territory. We're just saying, do you have the presence of satisfaction or do you have no satisfaction at all? And they can rate that on that scale of one to five. Now, all of these interval scales are what we call synthetic scales. They're all scales that are derived from um, what a researcher thinks that someone should answer as opposed to based on natural data. So a, a natural scale would be something like how much do you weigh or how tall are you or how, how old are you? Things that are based on measurements that are not up to the interpretation of the researcher, but that are just common units that we use to measure things. So I want to specify that all of these interval scales are developed by researchers and they have to go through a process called validation. You don't just make up a scale and, uh, and use it, you have to make a scale and test it and make sure that it's getting the kind of data that, that it should be getting and that you can validate it against some other source uh, before you can really rely on it. But the good news is that these scales, um, the, the four different types of scales that I showed you are, are in pretty common use and they do a pretty good job of getting data. There's some nuance to, to what they can deliver and there are ways to validate. But um, they, they typically are a pretty good format for asking questions of human beings. And that's really what's important to um, have in our toolbox when we go out and start conducting surveys ourselves because we want to make sure that we're not asking questions that are off-putting or difficult for people to answer. So you can take any of these scales and, and give them a shot. Uh, I would still recommend pilot testing them or, or trying them out on human beings before you uh, put them out in a full study. But um, they can be very useful and they can get you some really great information.